How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We're going to talk about some of the FANG stocks. Everyone but Netflix here today and the earnings that they had. And I recently made a video on Google and someone had said pretty much watch out. I They said they pretty much couldn't believe the fact that I was investing in such a mature company that's facing regulation. So I want to show you why some of these different FANG stocks are reacting the, the way that they are. I mean, Amazon falling down 5% after they beat earnings per share, not hitting revenue, but still being earnings per share. Some other companies moving up 5% after beating both and some other companies moving down 4% after beating both. I think some people don't really realize why certain stocks move to the way that they do. And a lot of it isn't from their bottom line or their top line. It's from reading between the lines or the narrative that they're giving. So we're going to discuss that. If you guys don't mind just hitting the like button though, I appreciate that. Amazon earnings per share, $15.12 versus $12.30 estimated. They came under on revenue by about $2.12 billion. So a little bit low there. And Amazon fell down 4.5%. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Alphabet earnings per share, 27.26 versus 19.34 estimated. We have Q2 revenues that beat by about $5 billion, $5.5 billion. We have Facebook. Facebook earnings per share is 3.61 versus 3.03 estimated. Revenue beat by about $1.2 billion. Then we have Apple, and we have a couple a couple pieces to, to cover on Apple. Apple Q3, which is really the same thing, Q2, earnings per share is $1.30 versus $1.00 and one cent estimated. So beat by about 29%. Q3 revenues, 81.4 billion versus 73.3 billion. So they beat by a significant amount on revenues. And then we have every metric broken down here, or maybe not every metric, but a lot of them. iPhone revenue, 39.5 versus 34 estimated. Services revenue, 17.5 versus 16.3. Other products revenue, 8.76 versus 7.8. Mac beat and then iPad beat. They also have $191 billion worth of cash, which is actually down from the last quarter. So these stocks are all reacting differently. Obviously, they've reported on different days, but we can take a look here today. Facebook, after beating significantly, I mean, we're talking about a 20% beat on earnings per share is down 4% today. They beat by 3% or so on revenues, 3 or 4%, and they're down 4%. Amazon is actually down 4.5% after hours. Apple stayed about steady. I mean, we've seen about $150 Apple. Now it's about 145 Then we have Google, which actually went up 3 or 4% on this news of them beating expectations. So it's really interesting to take a look at these. What is one issue that some of these companies are having something like Apple, for example, sells products and a lot of their revenue is from product sales. Now we did talk about services revenue, right? We did talk about how they are increasing services revenue from 16.3 up to 17.4, but you can see the majority of their money is coming from iPhones. Then they have Macs and iPads. So about 55 billion or so is coming from actual products, just in the top three products. That doesn't include their earphones or anything like that, or headphones. So the majority is coming from products. One thing that is an issue there, when they have a really good quarter, especially if they don't have anything coming up that's like, hey, the new iPhone 16 is coming out or whatever it is, uh, they have something called the sell through, which is that people would get worried that they will not sell as much the next quarter because they sold so much last quarter. People only have their iPhones uh, for so long, and if they have them too long, then it can affect iPhones sales. So sell through is an important thing that analysts look at and are usually worried about, especially with Apple. Something like Facebook, they fell down because they were not giving for guidance. They're not talking about what's gonna happen over the next year, the next few years. And they did say that they would expect a deceleration in their revenues and in their earnings per share. 
So they're not gonna grow 50, 60, 70% every single year like they have recently because we're coming out of an unprecedented time where everyone was at home. That being said, there are some exciting things for Facebook. I actually picked up more Facebook recently. I did a video recently covering kind of an augmented reality that they plan on rolling out with Matterport, which is cool. We have Google, which I love. I took a look at them today in a video and then also talked about them on TipRank's channel. Their, their YouTube business is growing faster than, than Netflix and it's bringing in more revenue. So it's just a small part of their business and it is growing faster than one of the other FANG stocks and is already larger than the other FANG stocks. Now, it's a much larger company, Google as a whole, but that does show you that they have parts of their business that can still grow 50, 60, 70% a year. This part of their business is actually growing 300%. So it forexed from last year in this last quarter, they did what they did in all of 2020. And you have to realize that's just ad sales. And I realize that advertisers aren't paying as much for ads in 2020 because they were worried, but also a lot of people were watching. So a lot of people were on their platform and I think they will continue to carry over because of the fact that people find, it's almost like a, it's almost like a show, right? You find a new show that you like, you continue with it. And with YouTube, there are a bunch of new shows. It's like Netflix, but it's free. It's more creative and it's vastly, it's vastly more diverse. So that's where I think a lot of people love YouTube and will continue at it. And then the last one that we have was Amazon. I'll be honest, I don't cover Amazon that much, but they did come under on revenues. Some people might be worried, hey, that's great that they had higher earnings per share, but we want massive top line growth. We want this to continue. We don't wanna see it leveling out. And that's maybe a fear of people coming out of the pandemic that maybe it stays stagnant. Maybe they're worried that, that their business will not grow like it did in the last year, obviously, and it probably shouldn't, right? It probably shouldn't continue to grow because the fact is we went through a very difficult time over the last year but that was good for almost every one of these companies. Every one of these companies got a boost from COVID. I mean, a lot of them have doubled or two and a half X uh, since the beginning of COVID or since the depths of COVID. Let's just take a look at Amazon's earnings here. We can see then if it really is, hey, we're leveling out a little bit and people are worried. So you can see quarter one was 125 billion and now we're down to 108. So people might be worried, and actually this, this hasn't been updated. So it was 125, then 108, then they were expecting 115, they got 113. So they came back a little bit, but still not what people wanted to see. So then let's go over to the question that was asked, which was why would you invest in such a mature company that still faces regulation? Now I'm coming at a different spot and <laughs> I realize the microphone might sound a little bit weird. I'm using my internal microphone. The dog woke up, the new puppy that we just got, so she's got the zoomies a little bit. But uh, <laughs> let's take a look at the companies. First of all, you have to realize I'm not investing my entire portfolio into these companies. But from a risk-reward standpoint, I think that there's pretty little risk, and you can see that they're still growing really quickly. So this is Alphabet stock, 33% revenue growth this last year. And their net income went up 100%. Going over to Facebook, we can see net income went up 66% and revenue went up 40%. So these companies are still growing quickly. These are not slow growth companies by any means. Sure, they're quote unquote more mature, but they have a ton of cash sitting around. So they have money for acquisitions. Parts of their company are still growing really quickly. For example, YouTube is growing 4x in revenue over the last year. So this part of Google is actually growing really quickly. Uh, so these companies have different risks, but they're still growing really quickly. So I still like them as part of a well-balanced portfolio. I still think that they have room to grow in the future. 
Now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to check out the link down below to tip ranks, definitely check it out. Thank you guys, and I will see you in the next video. There is a link down there to Weeble too in case you want some free stocks. Bye-bye.